Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Knowledge to Yahweh Shai, pray that the Most High blesses this lesson this evening. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past in order to understand the events that are currently happening on the earth. So they may get a much better understanding of what is soon to come on the earth. This here is going to be part two of this topic here of what's really going on in this world right now. I know that many Hebrews, Gentiles, are seeing the um, increased activity of the Most High. The Most High is now starting to get the world's attention. This situation going on with the coronavirus is all part of prophecy. And uh, it's all part of the curses. And we'll get into that over the next couple of videos. You're starting to see even um, things like Kobe Bryant uh, being taken out and all these, uh, all this numerology and all these gematria given all these different signs and messages and things like that. Again, to realize that, to make people realize that there's no such thing as uh, free will. The Most High is in control of everything, the right-hand side and the left-hand side. People trying to equate what's going on with what they've been taught in these churches. They're realizing that their churches know absolutely nothing. Many of them seem to have thought that, um, you know, they would have been raptured up, raptured away, um, America should be really, really blessed because America has been uh, supporting Ish this entire time, giving billions of dollars every single year to this certain country. And um, but things aren't quite working out that way. You know, I said there's a reason why these churches always say, "Well, America is not in bed times prophecy," but they can never give you a definitive reason as to why. In the opening, when I talk about you need to understand the past so you can understand what's going on right now. This is you, That's why people, you have no understanding as to what is going on in this current, you know, matrix system right now. Because you don't know the past. The past has been hidden. All of the information, all of the events that was happening before Columbus has been hidden from you. Many of the events that happened during the time of the uh, conquest of the promised lands here has been hidden from you. And the Most High has allowed, you know, the world to keep this information secret. But now at the end, in order to get understanding, you must understand who was here on these lands. You must understand whose land this was given to. You must understand why the other nations were allowed to come to the fourth part and how that fulfilled prophecy. Without understanding some of these basic, uh, basic things, basic information, you will never understand prophecy. This is why you cannot go to your priest or your pastor and get a correct understanding of what is going on right now. We're going to be jumping again into uh, the book here, same one that I used for the last video, The Life of Columbus. We're going to just read about a page and a half. Again, it is the cover of the page of the book again. And it's a history of the life and voyages of Christopher Columbus by Washington Irving. As you get a much better understanding of this history, you will then understand what is going on today. What you're seeing with the uh, birth pangs that are starting to now resonate every time you turn on your television. Today, there was like another 7.7 .7 earthquake Okay, in Jamaica, there's been earthquakes um, in uh, Puerto Rico, all over the world, everywhere. Volcanoes going off all over the place. Okay, so you're getting all this, all these things, you know, chariots being sighted all over the place. All right, you got this coronavirus that is now, you know, accelerating. And um, you got, you can say, even the fact that uh, Kobe Bryant, a beloved figure of this society, passed away suddenly but in his passing he's left a whole lot of markers and a whole lot of uh, information and a whole lot of um, 
it just he's left a whole lot of signs as to what we are transitioning into. And we'll get into that actually probably in the third video. All right. Now, what you got to understand is that what was happening in the past in the previous video, part one, you saw how the other nations were brought over here and uh, the natives or the Hebrews that were here enjoyed a very relaxing lifestyle because the most high provided all things for them. But once that's because they were living under the blessings. When they moved to the curses by not following the Most High, the Most High uh, brought the other nations over here and then made us work and, and have to uh, you know, provide uh, everything for our adversaries. We were hoping that it was only going to be for a short amount of time, but here it is hundreds of years later. Now we're starting to see the Most High turn his face back to his people. But you must understand the history in order to understand what's going on right now. Many people are walking around confused, not understanding what the hell is going on in our society. What the hell is going on with the people here? Well, the Most High is calling his children back. The Most High is waking his children up. And with that awakening, that does not uh, portend well for the other nations. All the people who have ignored our, our plight, all the people who have been enjoying all of our resources and not giving a thought, a second thought as to, um, is this really right? Are we treating these people right? Are we being fair with them? We say all men are created equal, but are we treating these people equal? Well, you're going to realize now that of course you have not been. And what you're going to realize is those people that you have been treating so badly are God's chosen people. And right now he's calling his children home. He's calling his people back to him. And that's what you're seeing happening right now. And it's not like what the churches have been telling you that everyone, you know, is equal and we're all the same and we're all God's people. We will get into that actually also because that's something that was going on during the time of Noah. Many of the things that have happened in the past are just repeating themselves over and over again. But the adversary has hidden all these other events that happened before. That's why when it talks about how in um, Matthew 24, when the Most High cracks the skies open, all the tribes are mourning because all the tribes have been lied to. I'm going to take a look here. This is on page 262. I think this is volume number two. Okay. Um, let's see here. Talk about Columbus needing to send some... Um, some treasures back to the um, to Spain in order to uh, appease uh, Ferdinand and Isabella, so that they will continue to give money for the expedition here to the Promised Land. So look at what he does, because you know when you talk about Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty eight, when you start bringing out information about how they were moving slaves from America to Europe, people they, they, they just get like a mental block. They're like, no, 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 Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty eight. That's only people. It means only from Africa to America. And it's funny how they they just like add these things that aren't there. It doesn't say that the only way this is fulfilled is from people coming from Africa to America. People were moved all over the place, even here in the Americas. North, South, Central America is a huge place. If you just put someone on a boat, take them a few hundred miles, you know, from say South America to Central America, that's that fulfills. Deuteronomy 2868 it doesn't say you have to take them from one place like Africa over to America, but you get these people with these mental blocks and they think that, um, that these prophecies are only filled one way, but that's what Esau has done. He makes it seem like is only like the only way natives got here was through the Bering Straits, right? They only have one way of, of thinking and they can't think outside of the box. Let's read here really quick up there towards the top. It goes, uh, at the same time, he exerted himself to the utmost to send by the ships satisfactory proofs of the value of his discoveries. He remitted by them all the gold that he could collect with specimens of other metals and of various fruits and valuable plants, which he had collected either in Hispaniola or in the course of his voyage. In his eagerness to produce immediate profit, and to indemnify the sovereigns for those expenses, which bore hard and royal treasury, he sent likewise above 500 Indian prisoners, who he suggested might be sold as slaves at Seville. So there's your Deuteronomy 2868 there. 
take pretty much loading up the uh, slaves here, the natives here, and taking them over to Seville, Spain, Spain to sell as slaves. Now you're seeing why now at this late hour, the Most High is calling his people back. He's good as a knowledge and understanding. So you understand why he is so upset. Okay. So again, he said likewise about 500 Indian prisoners who he suggested might be sold as slaves at Seville. Now that's, you know, a lot of people already know that. Some people don't, but uh, most of the people here already know that. But let's continue. It is painful because this person is trying to um, justify many of um, Columbus's actions. It says, it is painful to find the brilliant renown of Columbus sullied by so foul a stain and the glory of his enterprises degraded by such flagrant violations of humanity. The customs of the times, however, must be pleaded in his apology. So here we go. This is what happens when you start to, uh, you know, <laughs> use the, well, that's what was normal at that time. They're trying to justify all the things that they were doing. It goes like that Revelation 11, when our people are being, um, you know, on the ground dead and the rest of the world is, more, is, uh, is enjoying themselves. This is how they do it, by doing these justifications so that they can continue to enjoy their, um, their blessings while we suffer. <clears throat> so again, it goes, the customs of the times, however, must be pleaded in his apology. The precedent had been given long before by both Spaniards and Portuguese in their African discoveries, wherein the traffic in, slave, in slaves had uh, formed one of the greatest sources of profit. Okay. In fact, the practice had been sanctioned by the highest authority, by that of the church itself. This is very important, okay? The highest authority that they're talking about right here is the church. They're not talking about the highest authority being a country. They're not trying to say that the highest authority is a state. They're saying right here that the highest authority is the church. Now, <clears throat> When you listen to many of these Hebrew groups, they're always talking about how America is going to be destroyed. America is going to be destroyed. But they never talk about the church, the actual group that um, was the one that sanctioned the slavery, sanctioned all of this, uh, all this di these diabolical things happening to our people. But see, the Book of Moore actually goes into this and gives you much more uh, clarification. So see, when you hear people talking about, well, America's going to be destroyed, America... Okay, who was, the, who was the one that was responsible for what happened here? Though they get off scot-free? This was happening hundreds of years before America was even a thought. But see, many of these people in these groups, you know, it seems like they have an agenda as well. It seems like they are working to cover the sins of the Church of Mahan. Because, you know, it, it depends on who's the one that makes the call. Is it, are you going to get upset at the one who's executing, who's executing the orders or the one who gave the order that needs to be executed? And it doesn't always fall at the feet of the, of the boss. When there's something that goes wrong, it doesn't go on the people who are actually at the bottom. It should go on the one who actually makes the decisions. And that's why when the Most High talks about coming back, he's come back to destroy the uh, church of Mahan. That's what's talked about all over the Book of Mormon. But let's continue. Okay? It says, in fact, <clears throat> the practice had been sanctioned by the highest authority, by that of the church itself. And the most learned theologians had pronounced all barbarous and infidel nations who shut their ears to the truce of Christianity as fair objects of war and rapine, rapine, uh, rapine of captivity and slavery. If Columbus needed any practical illustration of this doctrine, he had it in the conduct of Ferdinand himself. So see, they're using, you know, the church and the theologians as their cover for all their, uh, their dubious deeds. You see that? Now, if people are still supporting this church, they are complicit. Okay? And I don't want to hear, oh, I'm not Catholic. Catholics and Christians both did this. Catholics did this in um, Central America, Mexico, um, all the way down into um, South America. And so-called Christians were the ones who continued the same practices here in America. Okay? 
And they've been doing it over there in the so-called Middle East. They've been doing it over there so-called in, in, in Africa. You know, they've been doing this the, all over the world. So you don't get a, you don't get a, you know, get out of jail free card because you say, I didn't know. Most High is now allowing you to realize uh, what these churches, these institutions of Mahan have been, um, how they've been set up and what they've been doing and how they have, when you go over there to the Vatican, you see all this gold and all this money. You see all of our records. Now you see how they got it. Now you're seeing, you know, what these uh, institutions have been set up on. And now you should be able to understand why everything around this world is starting to fall apart. Because now the Most High is releasing his people and calling them back home. He's saying, let my people go. And now he's making himself known. Even more so than before. Okay. So again, let's read that part one more time. In fact, the practice had been sanctioned by the highest authority, by that of the church itself, and the most learned theologians. So remember now, when you go into these churches, these, these priests, pastors, theologians are all the ones who are so they're still here today, the ones that are now representing these institutions. You can't get off with a, oh, well, I'm sorry. Oh, um, we're not those kinds of Catholics. Or, oh, we're not those kinds of Christians. Oh, those people weren't real Catholics. Oh, they weren't real Christians. Yes, but you still support their institutions and you still benefit from all of the money and all of the um all of the uh, everything that they've stolen the money the land the resources everything you still take it and you still enjoy it all right so it says uh theologians the pronounced all bar barbarous and infidel nations who shut their ears to the truths of christianity as fair objects of war and rapine, uh, of uh, captivity and slavery. If Columbus needed any practical illustration of this doctrine, he had it in the conduct of Ferdinand himself. In his late wars with the Moors of Granada, in which he had always been surrounded by a crowd of ghostly advisors and had professed to do every, uh, everything for the glory and advancement of the faith, in this holy war, as it, ter as it was termed, it was a common practice to make inroads into the Moorish territories and carry off calvogadas, not merely of flocks and herds, but of, uh, but of human beings. And those not, um, not warriors taken with weapons in their hands, but quiet villagers, laboring peasantry, and helpless women and children. These were carried to the mart of Seville or to other populous towns and sold into slavery. The capture of Malaga was uh, a memorable instance, whereas punishment for an obstinate and brave defense, one should have ex um, one should have excited admiration rather than revenge. Eleven thousand people of both sexes and of all ranks and ages, many of them highly cultivated and delicately reared, were suddenly torn from their homes, severed from each other, and swept into menial slavery even though half of their ransoms had been paid. Okay. So this practice of tearing up families, selling people, old, young, uh, men, women, children, everything has been something that's been practiced and it was sanctioned by the church and their theologians. So now when you go to Joel t uh, 3, you understand why the Most High says what he says and Joel 3 would see, when you don't read the Bible, you don't look at the scriptures, and you don't get the people right, everything, you know, is off. Let me go there really quick. Joel 3, okay. 3 and 4. Nope. We we'll started at 3. Uh, we'll start at Joel 3 and 3. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. Yea. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. So they came here, and that's what they were taking, our gold and our silver. All right, and they were taking it back to their country. Six, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remo remove them far from their border. 
So they were doing this over there in the so-called Middle East with the Southern Kingdom, and they came over here and did the same thing by selling our people here into slavery and removing them far from their border here as well. If you read the Bible, you will only get that mostly for about the Southern Kingdom, but you will not get the chance to hear about that happening and get the documentation of that happening to the Northern Kingdom. And now you're getting it right now. Okay, so now I'll go to seven. This is what you're seeing right now. This is what you're seeing the whole start of right now. The recompense. Let's go to the three and seven. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. He is raising us up to know who we are, know where we came from, know that these uh, prophecies are twofold. They happen to the southern kingdom in one place. They happen to the northern kingdom in another place. But the church was the one that sanctioned them both. So as they, you know, you, they, he's raised the, these churches and these uh, institutions have raised up people that look like us to make sure that you point the finger at the wrong people and you don't point the finger at actually who were the ones that were actually responsible for this so they can continue to live in luxury and you never look at the people who were actually responsible for all the things that have been happening to us. It wasn't America that sanctioned the slavery. This was the church that was raised up, the Church of Satan, the Church of, the church of Mahan. Real quick now, First Nephi 13. And this is this is giving you more accurate understanding than even what you're hearing about in the Bible, because this is talking about that abominable church that has been raised up and the things that they that is important to this church. Now, when you compare what this what this says here about what um, the Europeans were doing, the Spaniards when they were doing, when they got here and what they were looking for, it all fits just like a glove. And it came to pass that I saw among the nations of the Gentiles the formation of a great church. And the angel said unto me, Behold, the formation of a church which is most abominable above all other churches, which slayeth the saints of the Most High, yea, and tortureth them, and bindeth them down, and yoketh them with a yoke of iron, and bringeth them down into captivity. What is this church supposed to be doing? Bringing them where? Into captivity. Binding them down. Yoketh them down with a yoke of iron. Bringing them down with captivity. What did it say right here? Who was a group that was the ones that actually was responsible for, you know, passing the judgment that we could be put into slavery? Let's see again right here. Who was that here? See. In fact, in fact, the practice had been sanctioned by the highest authority, uh, by that of the church itself and the most learned theologians. Okay? So right there. It's showing you right there. If it's not them, then who is it? It's not enough to sit there and say you're wrong. If you're gonna say that we're wrong, and this book isn't this book isn't true, then you explain it. Which church is it? And it came to pass that I beheld this great and abominable church, and I saw the devil, and that he was the founder of it. I also saw gold and silver, and silks and scarlets, and fine twine linen, and all manner of precious clothing. And I saw many harlots. Is there any harlots? All these other offshoots of that great mother of that great church. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the gold and the silver and the silks and the scarlets and the fine twine linen and the precious clothing and the harlots are the desires of this great and abominable church. What was um, Columbus so worried about? Making sure that he got what? My, my gold, silver, anything he could send back slaves in order for them to get money so they can continue to um, fund the expedition. Okay? And also, for the praise of the world, do they destroy the saints of God and bring them down into captivity. So this church was the one that brought us into captivity, that destroyed, you know, the Jerusalem over here, the promised land over here. And that's why the vast majority of the world praises this church and follows this church, because that was the institution of the devil that brought our people down. But now what you're seeing is the Most High reversing everything. Now you're seeing the Most High raise his people back up. And now you're starting to see um, the Most High turn his face back towards us. And now what you're seeing is um, truth spreading all over the world. So this was part two. I'll be, uh, God Most High willing, bring you part three shortly. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. 
Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.